Luke Rockhold vs. Paulo Costa. That was every bit the shit show I thought it could be, and it was fantastic watching that. It really was. These guys are both characters. They're both, you know, uh, like arrogant douchebag types or whatever, which is great, you know. Uh, I don't care what you act like, you know, it, you know, especially if you're playing it up for the camera. As long as you get in there and fight, then you could be the arrogant douchebag that got knocked out or whatever. You put it all on the line. I'm a, I'm a fan of yours for bringing all that horse shit to the game. And that's what these guys do. They, you know, Luke, especially this week, he was more of a character than he ever was before. He was really angry and bringing it and resentful and bitter. And it was fucking awesome. And Paulo Costa, he always brings a fuck show. You know, there's always some horse shit. You know, he's missing weight. And sh whatever, that whole thing with Vittori was just legendary shit show. But uh, this fight was awesome. It was awesome, despite it being a little embarrassing. I say that because as an MMA fan, I really... I want this sport to look, uh, you know... I want the sport to be revered by the casuals and the masses. I always assume it's someone's first time watching MMA whenever I watch an event. Then I go, I imagine this is your first experience. What are they thinking of this? And I imagine them thinking, these guys are really out of shape, you know, despite how they look, of course. Paulo Costa and Luke Rockhold are elite. They're supposed to be elite fighters. That's how I describe them. That's how the commentary discre uh, team described them. And... To have elite athletes gassed and hurt after round one. And, you know, I'll be the first one to say, you can always, fighters will always be fatigued. You're just one body shot away from being fatigued. It hits you in the wrong spot or one little punch or whatever. And the toes go into the ribs or whatever. And you're, you're hurt and it looked like nothing, but we don't know what you're feeling and it's insane. You're fucking compromised for the rest of the fight. Having said that, Despite my appreciation for how easily someone can be fatigued, it doesn't make it any less embarrassing when you watch elite athletes in your sport and they're utterly fatigued, not even a third way through the uh, fight. Not even a third through the fight. And that's what we saw, especially with Luke Rockhold. He was gassed. A lot of that came, I think, from his nose. I don't know if his nose was broken or whatever, but he was busted up after that ground and pound from Luke Rockhold, or, uh, from uh, Paulo Costa early. And uh, Luke was compromised. But this was the redemption of Luke Rockhold. That's what this fight was. Luke is a guy, look, I picked him to get knocked out. So did everyone else, because every time he loses, especially as of late, he's been knocked out. And he was knocked out by Michael Bisping, who... Despite landing the perfect left hand, you know, right on the chin, it's, uh, he's not a power puncher at all. So, I still feel confident in saying Luke Rockhold's got a weak chin. I don't mean that, like, to knock him or whatever. I think he's a phenomenal fighter. I'm just saying, some people will get this fight and say, he doesn't have a weak, he just went 15 minutes with Costa. He did, but I'm still, I feel like, if he were to fight... Three more times, if you were to lose three more times, at least two of them are via TKO. That's what I mean when I say weak chin, is it's going to fail him again. You know, just like Andre Orlovsky. And I've seen him take it on the chin from plenty of great fighter, but he's still relatively got a weaker chin. He just protects it well nowadays. But uh, Luke Rockhold, you know, he really did redeem himself in this fight because he was beaten up. And he didn't go down, his chin didn't fail him, and certainly his heart didn't fail him. And he had a lot of great optical moments, just great optics, where he was beaten down. I think this was in round two, and he gave Paulo Costa the finger and said, fuck you, fuck you, and then hit him with a big overhand left and stunned him. And he wasn't able to pounce on it, but he still, he, he had a few very cool redeeming moments and they got the fans on his side. He won those fans over where by the end of it, he had them eating out of his hand. It was awesome to see for Luke Rockhold because he's always been, uh, you know, regarded as an arrogant dickhead, douchebag, fucking surfer dude, douche, douchebag. You know, I don't know. You know where I'm going with that though. You have an idea. But... 
he uh, fucking had everyone on his side cheering his name last night, and it was fucking awesome to see. And one thing about Luke, technically, you know, he's, uh, like, not the most powerful puncher. Pretty much every fighter needs an overhand punch. And Luke Rockhold, even though, you know, he's got an overhand punch and he's thrown it plenty, he came to rely on his check right hook and his left kick to the body, you know, which is his power kick to the body, the head, whatever. That's pretty much Luke Rockhold in a nutshell. And that was him for the first, like, round and a half of this fight. And then there was a moment where it just occurred to him, I've got a power punch. And I think it might have been that fuck you moment. And Luke ran, landed a big overhand left. And then he landed, like, another four throughout that fight. Any big shot that hurt Paulo Costa, and there were plenty of them, it was an overhand left. You know, where Luke Rockhold was, like, the anti-overhand guy. Most fighters, especially, like, a wrestler, like, you know, I was talking about in the pre-fight when I talked about maybe Usman's wrestling for, uh, dissipating. It's because most wrestlers go that way when they find a big overhand right. Josh Kostrak, Gray Maynard, whoever else I listed, Dan Henderson, blah, 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 and their wrestling suffers. Luke went the other way with his striking, you know? He... I think he might even be a uh, right-handed, you know, fighter. That might be uh, his power hand. But he fights southpaw, and he's got that. He relies on that check right hook and the kicks, and you know, people have figured him out. And it was like in this fight, he went back to basics and said, "Oh yeah, this is what I was doing when I first started striking. Let me try this, this overhand." And the overhand was. His greatest weapon in that fight. And it was the closest he came to finishing Costa. I did think he rushed the uh, that moment where I forget what happened. If he caught a kick or whatever. But he kind of just uh, crashed. In, oh no, Paulo Costa ended up on his back somehow. I think a kick was caught. And then Luke charged him and got on top of him. And Luke settled on top of him. But he never really, really settled. He moved right away. Started moving, playing jujitsu, And he cut through that guard and it looked like he was about to get the mount, and Paulo Costa just, uh, he had a little bit of room there with all of Luke's movement, and he got himself out. But that was Luke's moment to win the fight. Luke Rockhold is as good as anybody's ever been in the full mount. And if he got the full mount on Costa, I'm telling you, that was it. But uh, Paulo Costa, look, I've been talking all about Luke Rockhold, especially because he retired, which I don't think I mentioned in this video, but I'm sure you saw he retired. Uh... Which means, you know, he's probably got another fight or two in him. You know how MMA retirements go. But Paul Costa, uh, Paul Costa, this was his night. He still, he had a hard fight in front of him. That's a big, tall, strong athlete who wasn't going away. And he's got a lot of offense, Luke Rockhold. And he threw it all at Costa. Costa looks sloppy throughout the fight and whatever, but it can't be denied that he was a beast that came in there and took the fight to Luke Rockhold. I thought he soundly won each round, and I was impressed that he used his grappling and wrestling offensively, and to some degree success, a significant degree, if you think about what he did to Rockhold's face in round one. So, redemptive performance from both fighters. Redemptive, listen to me. It, it was a redeeming performance for both fighters, though. But uh, in the end, you know, this was like a great pro wrestling match where the loser gets over, as they say, going over. You know, uh, that means uh, whatever, finding, you know, success, getting the crowd behind you pretty much. And that's what Luke Rockhold did. He got the crowd behind him. He lost, but he got over. And the crowd loved him like they've never loved him before, even when he won that belt. So, uh Awesome moment for Luke Rockhold, especially if this is his retirement, and a great win for Paul Costa. Paul Costa, you know, he's already got some great wins, but this is certainly on paper his biggest win, and people can dismiss it all they'd like, you know, with uh, Luke was this and that and the layoff and whatever, but on paper he just beat a former champion. It's exactly what he needed, and uh, despite him being a big favorite, I was impressed with his performance, you know, uh... He didn't get the knockout or whatever, but he uh, faced adversity and he didn't stop coming. That was different, much different than the Romero fight, but a similar effort. So that was an awesome co-main event, and that was fight of the night.
one of the best fuck shows on paper. Oh, yeah, and Luke Rockhold. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about him rubbing his bloody face and Paulo Costa's face. The face-to-face -face blood rape. First time we've ever seen that in the UFC. Not the classiest move or whatever, but that was awesome. That was angry Luke Rockhold. You know, just, uh, he turned over in uh, the last 30 seconds. And he knew he wasn't going to win the fight. But he thought he would, I guess that was his way of uh, retaining some dignity or whatever. Or maybe taking some of Costa's dignity. But no matter what it was, it got over with the fans. The fans, the crowd loved that. I loved it, despite, you know, whatever, fucking uh, diseases being passed around on live television. But that was fucking awesome. Great, great moment, great fight, and the sloppy fucking mess we all deserved.